Welcome back students to Unit 5 and 6, the mole and analytical chemistry. Today we will be going over Unit 6, analytical chemistry. Science likes to classify things. In biology, we classify organisms based on how they move and later based on their genetic makeup, their phylogenetic tree. In chemistry, we classify substances based on their composition. So for example, all energy storing molecules known as hydrocarbons have the same general format, carbon and water thus the name hydrocarbons. So for example, the sugar you ate at lunch might have been glucose C6H12O6, which would break down to a CH2O. Things are broken down based on their composition. This is not a new concept for you. You've heard that you are 70% water. You could break down the earth and say that the earth is 50% oxygen and the sun is about 75% hydrogen because we classify things based on what make them up in chemistry, their percent composition. Percent composition can also be used to talk about compounds. If I have a compound and a certain amount of it is one element versus another, that will give me an idea as to what that compound can be used for. So for example, and this is example four in your packet, if I have a five gram sample and three grams of it is carbon, what is the percent carbon and the percent hydrogen in it? Well. If I have a 5 gram sample, that would be the total amount. And percentages are always some part divided by the whole times 100. So the part here being carbon, if we say I have 3 grams of carbon and the total being 5, I can find the percent carbon in this substance, which comes out to be 75%. If there's only one other element present, if I subtract 75 from 100, I can find that 25% of it must be hydrogen. That's a fairly straightforward and simple percent composition or percent by mass problem. You could make it a little more interesting by instead of having the actual masses of each element present, instead having the formula. If you have the formula of a compound, you can use the molar masses we learned about last class to find their percent composition or percent by mass. So if we talk about ethanol, ethanol is the active ingredient in alcohol, ethanol is C2H5OH. If I want to know the percent carbon, the percent hydrogen, and the percent oxygen in ethanol, I could do so by some fairly simple ideas. Altogether, ethanol has a molar mass. The molar mass of ethanol would be if we added up the two carbons, the five plus one, six hydrogens, and the one oxygen. So the molar mass of ethanol must be 12 times 2 plus 6 times 1 plus 16. So ethanol's molar mass is 46 grams for every mole. Now that would be the total mass of ethanol. If we want to know each part, we could do so by using that as our denominator. The parts that go into it, the percent carbon, say, would be if we take the carbon and divide by that total and then multiply by a hundred. We, we now know that that total amount is 46 grams for every mole. But there's not a single carbon in ethanol. There are two carbons in ethanol contributing to that mass. So we have to take that into account, that two carbons are the part of the whole 46. So 
for two carbons, that would be the mass we will put in our numerator. So 2 times 12 divided by 46 will be the percent carbon in ethanol. So 24 divided by 46 times 100 is 52. If we're looking at the percent hydrogen in ethanol, we could take the molar mass of hydrogen and divide by the total times 100. That total mass of ethanol being what we calculated before, that it's 46 grams. And it's not a single hydrogen contributing to this mass, there are six of them. So we have to take that into account, that it's six hydrogens divided by the total times 100. Hydrogen has a molar mass of one, so it's really just six divided by 46 times 100 comes out to be 13 percent. We could do the same for oxygen, 16 divided by 46 times 100, or we could work smart, not hard. Percentages have to equal the total 100 percent. So if I subtract the percent hydrogen and the percent carbon, I can find the part that's missing, the oxygen, and find that oxygen's percent composition of ethanol is 34.8 percent. Percent composition has many practical uses, one of which is to figure out how much of a particular element you could extract from a sample. This shows up most when we try to extract elements from a particular ore. So for example, with ethanol, let's say you want to extract just the carbon. If I wanted to pull the carbon out of ethanol, how many grams of carbon could I pull out of a 10 gram sample? We just calculated that carbon makes up 52% of ethanol. If I want to know how much of that 10 grams is just carbon, I could take the 10 grams and multiply by the percent to figure out how many grams of that 10 grams is straight carbon. Remember that 52%, the percent symbol is actually a mathematical operant, like pi or the natural log E. That mathematical operant, that percent symbol means that it's 52 for every 100. That's where the word percent comes from. So 10 times 52% is not 10 times 52, it is 10 times 0.52 giving us 5.2 grams of carbon that we could capture from ethanol. With that being said, you are able to answer note quiz question 1 and 2, as well as complete page 10 in your packet. On page 10, the odd numbers will ask you to calculate the percent of a particular element within a compound, and then the even numbers will ask you to take that percent and use it to figure out how many grams of that compound is a particular element. Pause the video and complete page 11 as well as the first two note quiz questions. When we talked about ionic compounds, ionic compounds are truly positive ions and truly negative ions that surround one another. And since they surround one another, there's no distinct number of each ion present. So when we talked about ionic compounds, we listed their formulas as the simplest ratio of one ion to another. This is known as an empirical formula, the simplest ratio of one element to another. And for ionic compounds, this is the only formula we have. When we talk about covalent compound, like water or tetraphosphorus, decaoxide, 
covalent compounds have a distinct number of each element that are needed to share electrons to reach their lowest energy state. It takes two hydrogens sharing electrons with one oxygen or four phosphorus sharing electrons with 10 oxygens to make that compound at its lowest energy state. You could reduce these numbers down, but you don't because that is not how they appear. This is an individual entity of one oxygen and two hydrogens. This group of three live together, stay together through their chemical bonds. These are known as molecular formulas. Molecular formulas are the actual number of each element present, and we use them with covalent compounds. However, covalent compounds can fall into groups or families based on their composition. When we started this lecture, I talked about hydrocarbons. Carbon with a ratio of water that are used to store energy. So you, you store your energy in glucose. Plants store their energy in fructose. These are similar compounds. They do similar things and they have a basic formula of carbon and water. They are molecular compounds that have a similar, that have the same empirical formula. Empirical formulas can be derived from molecular formulas simply by reducing them down. This gives us another way to discuss co compounds. So if I give you a molecular formula and I ask you for its empirical formula, simply reduce it down. 4 to 10, I could pull a 2 out, giving me 2 to 5. Not all molecular formulas can be reduced, right? So water H2O, 2 to 1 is a simple ratio. It cannot go further down. So water's empirical and molecular formula are the same. So let's do some of these. As we just talked about, H2O is two hydrogens for every one oxygen. You cannot reduce that down, so water's empirical formula is simply H2O. However, ethylene, ethylene is C2H2. I can reduce that by pulling out the two, giving me CH. Or diarsenic pentoxide. I could reduce that down. 2 to 10 can be reduced by pulling out the 2, giving me ASO5. So empirical formulas are simply reducing the ratio of one element to another. If we reduce that ratio, it also reduces the molar mass. So if you wanted to go backwards from an empirical formula to a molecular formula, you would have to figure out how much the molar mass was reduced by. The way this will traditionally work is that I will give you the molecular formula's molar mass and the empirical formula and ask you what is the molecular formula. You can do this by taking the molar mass that I give you and dividing it by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So two phosphorus and five oxygens. You would find that this number would be two, plugging that back into the empirical formula will let you find the molecular formula. That sounds a little confusing, so let's actually just do one. CH2O is an empirical formula. So as I said, I will give you the empirical formula. And it has a molar mass of 180 grams for every mole. So what is the molecular formula? That 180 grams for every mole is substantially larger than the molar mass of the empirical formula there. The empirical formula is one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. So the empirical formula's molar mass would be 12 plus 2 times 1 plus 16 
or 30 grams for each mole. Meaning that the molecular formula is six times as big as the empirical formula. So we'll take that six and put it back into our empirical formula to figure out what our molecular formula is. So six times one is six, six times two is 12, and six times one is six. Our molecular formula would be C6H12O6. With that, you can go ahead and do three, four, and five. You can also do five, six, seven, and eight, as well as the top of page nine. Pause the video and complete your note quiz questions up to eight, as well as page nine. If you decide to major in chemistry, there are many fields you could go into. You could go into pharmaceutical chemistry, where you come up with new drugs for diseases. You could go into mechanical chemistry, where you work on engineering projects to come up with new substances to be used in industry. Or you could go into forensic chemistry, where you work with the police department to identify substances. Now, if you're given a white powder by the police department and they ask you, what is this? You cannot just assume that it's cocaine. You have to prove it. So the way that we prove what some things are, the way we figure out what a substance is, is we make it undergo chemical reactions that everything has the same product for. When you burn something, when you undergo a combustion reaction, whatever you're working with, say some substance is just chemical A and chemical B. While this is not chemically sound, when you undergo a combustion reaction, the oxygen kind of distributes into those reactants. And you end up with oxides, with oxides of the reactant. So they always produce the same products. Combustion reactions always produce oxides of the product of the reactants elements. So if we burn something, if we oxidize it, we can pull those oxygens out and figure out how much of a sample is one element versus another. So when in doubt, as chemists, we tend to burn things. If we know the percent, if we either know the mass of a particular element or its percent, we can use that information and the simple fact that elements always combined in whole number ratios to form products. Those whole number ratios can be used to figure out the empirical formula. Now, the way that we go about doing this is a step-by-step -step procedure. This has four steps, and these steps were taught to me by Miss Freeman, one of my colleagues from when I first started teaching this class, and she came up with a poem to help students remember the steps. So the poem is percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply till whole. Each one of the lines of the poem, percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply till whole, is one of the steps along the way to finding an empirical formula from its percent composition. So the easiest way to do this is to learn by doing. So empirical formula questions come in a couple of flavors. Sometimes you're given just the percentages like you are in example nine. Sometimes you're given the percentages and in a later problem like on a free response they give you the molar mass and are expected to find the molecular formula. And sometimes they're given together. Let's tackle the first type of problem. If you're given just the percent composition of a compound, so let's tackle number nine first. We use the poem percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply to whole to find the empirical formula. So the first step of our poem is percent to mass. What that means is that we will change the percent signs to grams, because we'll assume we have a 100 gram sample, meaning that if it's 30, if it's 43% phosphorus, that means that it's 43 grams of phosphorus. If you already have grams, you can skip that step. Once you have percent to mass, the next step is mass to mole. 
Mass to mole means you'll use your factor label method to convert grams into moles. Remember we do this by using the molar mass, the number of grams it takes to make one mole of a substance. So one mole of phosphorus, we would grab our periodic table and find that phosphorus has a molar mass of 30.97 grams for every one mole. For oxygen, the molar mass of oxygen is one oxygen, so that's 16 grams for every one mole. Grams cancel out and we're left with moles. So 43.64 divided by 30.97 is 1.409 moles of phosphorus. And 56.36 divided by 16 is 3.523 moles of oxygen. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small. Since Formulas are a ratio of one element to another. If we divide by the smallest number of moles, we can determine the ratio of one of these elements to the other. So it will divide both of these numbers by 1.4. So anything divided by itself is one. So our ratio is going to be one phosphorus for every 2.4999, let's call that two and a half for every two and a half oxygens. And if our poem ended here, you'd be done. But that's not how chemistry works. You cannot have half an oxygen. So that's why the poem goes on. For one final verse, multiply till whole. Meaning multiply so you end up with a whole number ratio where that first decimal place is a zero, one, eight, or nine, if that first decimal place, this one right here, is a zero, one, eight, or nine, we will call those whole numbers. So there's a little bit of rounding to this. When we say multiply till whole, we say multiply by two. And if that doesn't work, scratch it and multiply both numbers again by three. If that doesn't work, multiply by four. And if that doesn't work, multiply by five. But if you have to go past five, you might've messed up. You might wanna come see me. So, we will multiply both of these numbers by two to start with. One times two is two, so we have two phosphorus. Two and a half times two is five oxygens. So this is a whole number ratio. The empirical formula for our compound is P2O5. As I said, these problems tend to come in two stages or as one giant riff. Let's say this problem came as two stages. Meaning we'll tackle example 10 next. If our empirical formula we just, we just found is P2O5, if its molar mass is supposed to be 283, grams for each mole, we can figure out what its molecular formula is. 283 grams for each mole is our molecular formula's molar mass. If we would divide that by the empirical formula's molar mass, we can figure out, we can figure out what our number it was reduced by. So we'll take the molar mass of P2O5, which would be two phosphorus and five oxygens. So two times 30.97 plus five times 16 is 141.94 grams for each mole. Meaning that this empirical formula was reduced by a two. So we can put that two 
back into our empirical formula to find the molecular formula, which is P4O10. That is one way to do this problem, and that is how you should do note quiz question number nine. Another way to do this problem is if they all, if you were given all the information at once, they give you the empirical formula, or they give you the molecular formulas, molar mass, and the percentages. You can use those percentages and the molar mass of the molecular formula to determine the ratio of each element to one another because they have to combine in whole number ratios at this same ratio, at the same percentage. So if I take my molar mass and I multiply by the percent composition of each element, it would tell me how many grams for each mole that compound, that element is contributing to the formula. And if I use their molar masses, I can get what their ratio is to one another. So four phosphorus to 10 oxygens. So rather than use the poem, if you have all the information, you can get straight to the final answer, which is how you could do number 10 on your note quiz questions. With that being said, we are now done with unit 6.1. Please complete page 12, as well as page 13, 14, and 15 in your packet. Next class, we will take a test, a quiz, where you will have to find the percent composition. Use that percent composition to find an empirical formula, so use the poem. You will then be able to find the molar mass by taking the mass of a sample and dividing by how many moles are present. Since molar mass is the number of grams for every one mole, if you take the mass and divide by moles, you can get the molar mass. And from that molar mass, determine an empirical formula. Good luck on your quiz, and I will see you in Unit 6.2, Chemical Equations.